Today, I have five Kittle hacks for you. Yes, I am at home today. No, I do not live at the Kittle office. Three of these hacks are kind of just hidden feature specific things that you may not know about in Kittle yet. If you're a Kittle champion pro expert user, you may know what they are, but most likely at least one of these five things is gonna be new to you. So let's go ahead and jump in here. I have five boards here just to give you a little sneak peek of what's going on. The first one is going to be and, and I know for a lot of you, this is gonna be like, oh my gosh, why did I not know about it? I've been trying to do this forever. I'm, I'm here to save your life. So on the left side here, I have my design, a nice window shape with some text, a soccer ball, some stars, maybe kind of looking like a badge or like a, a t-shirt design or something, a hat design or something like that. But if I click on this background right here, and I go to color, I can actually fully change the background color because this is completely cut through. These texts, these shapes are all punched through this window shape right here. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that. So similarly on the right side over here, I can pick this shape right here and change the color of this, but it's not the same because the text is just that kind of off-white color it's not punched through and so you've got your your window shape right and then you've got your text on top of it and it's, it's not cut through so if you print that on a shirt it's gonna be black white and then on your green shirt or whatever instead of cutting through just having the window with the with the text and the icons punched through so let's fix that so let's start with this big sc right here so we're gonna, first we're going to select our text and then we're going to select our window shape and with the shape builder tools that you can see right here i'm going to select the second option that says subtract boop and that's going to punch out my text right there and we're really just going to repeat this process with each of the individual elements. What's actually neat is that you can do this with groups as well. So for example, I've got this soccer ball right here and these two stars. I can actually group those together like they are right now. If I just click on it, it selects the whole group, hold shift and click my window shape again. I can click subtract and it's gonna punch out that design through the window shape. Last thing I need to do here is grab my upper text and even with this in a, in a text transformation, I can still do the same thing. Select my window, boom, punch through my, my text right there. So now we've got the same effect going on here where I can take my slider and I can change whatever color that I want to behind this. And this opens up some really cool opportunities for you know, using like maybe like a radial gradient or something where you want to have a couple of different colors going on and have that, you know, show through the text. I could add another color in here and then just get really creative with the way that this kind of shines through that design there. Tons of things that you can do with this. Obviously, this is just one single example, but this is especially helpful for people that might be printing things. Even if you're doing POD and not like screen printing yourself, a lot of times you want a transparent design with the text or the, or the icons punched through whatever the shape is so that it just prints onto the shirt with, with an opacity. So this is how you would achieve that. Now, another kind of cut through or punch through effect that you can do here is cutting text via the stroke that's around the text. So we've got kind of a cutout here going on that outlines my script font that cuts into the title font right here. So just to display this, if I grab this white block and I put some color on it, it is, you know, that that negative stroke around the text is actually showing through to the color. If I grab this one and I make it a color, it's like, ah, it's that's fake, you know, and I, you've probably clicked into a template before and seen this and then as as soon as you change the color of the background, you notice that it was just a stroke around the text that made this effect, which is fine and, and quick and easy if you're doing a solid color background. But as soon as you put it on any multicolored kind of gradient background or a photo or anything other than a solid background, it has to be like a negative opacity like this. So 
Let's fix that. First, we're going to make sure that our group here is selected. So I've got my title font here, my header, that's just Anton, the font, and then the, the subtitle here is just Luxurious Script. So it's just a nice font pairing there. And I'm gonna make sure that these are grouped together because if I quick export them and they're not grouped together, it'll be a zip file and it's two different files and you want them to be the same thing. So make sure they're grouped. Then we're gonna go to quick export. Format is gonna be PNG and then size. I just put it to three times the size because you're gonna want this to be nice and, and big because what we're gonna do is actually vectorize it. So let's go ahead and click export and we're gonna bring this file back into Kittle. Let's grab this guy right here, size it up. So my recommendation with this is to do the effect first with just black and white. Black text, white stroke, give the vectorizer the easiest time vectorizing your element. So we're just gonna click this, vectorize. We can leave this on one color right here. And it has now gotten rid of the white part of that stroke. And we can put our nice title element right back here on our shape. And as you can see, I can go through here and change the color to whatever I want. And that negative stroke has now punched through to the color behind. Also, since this is vector, yes, now I can change it to any color that I want. I could drag an image in here and this gives me the same effect. So for those of you who have been trying to figure out how to do this, there you go. That's how you achieve this effect. I will say, make sure that you have a saved editable version of your text, which you shouldn't have any issues because you you downloaded a PNG version of the text that was that you edited in the first place. So just don't just don't delete it. Like just keep it. Just drag it off the artboard because you can do that. Just drag it off. Boop. Just drag it off the artboard and keep it there in case you need to edit something. Come back to it and then you'll just go through this process again. Doesn't really take a lot of time. So that's how you achieve that effect super super helpful and it just unlocks a lot of different things that you can do with fonts and title elements awesome so moving on to another effect i didn't know what to call this so i just wrote remove fills it is kind of similar we've got one with kind of like a solid color and we've got a letter that has a kind of a step and repeat horizontal lines pattern but what i would want to do if i open this up in a template is I would want to be able to change the color of the background and not have this still show. I would want to have only the lines so that I have flexibility of color. So similarly, we're gonna grab this, pull it off the artboard. We're gonna make sure that this is grouped together, just Command G. We're gonna do the same thing, export it as a PNG, three times size, now we've got our nice icon in here. This is a PNG and it's nice and big so we can scale it up. And we're gonna go to vectorize and this time we're gonna do two colors. We're gonna vectorize this. See, now you have your logo and it is now broken up into colors. Since it's just a PNG, the vectorizer doesn't know that it was a solid color R with horizontal lines stacked on top of it so that if you turned off the lines it would just show what's behind it which is the solid r so it's vectorized it to the two colors that it sees in the png so we can just go over here and click hide color and it's gone so now we can drag this down here and if we change the color of the background it's punched through on that r versus the original if we turned this color off it would just show a solid R through, which this opens up a lot of possibilities using this specific method. You can use the text decoration functions to give you different sets of colors, export them as PNGs, re-import them, vectorize them, and then you have individual color control over them. Because technically, these text decorations are just sitting on top of the letter. They are not cutting through or punching through the letter. So same with the oblique lines or the fading color cut, the standard color cut, you could do whatever you want, which the fading color cut is a sick effect. That is very, very cool. So yeah, the more you know. So on to our next Kittle hack. 
this is kind of just a design hack in general. Maybe this is not necessarily a Kittle hack, but when I started designing, I thought that the only thing that I could use for textures was textures, things that I knew were textures, but you can use any photo as a texture. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If you go to the images panel and let's just scroll down and find something we like, this is pretty cool. And you know, we let's scale this up, put it at an, a nice position here, maybe rotate it a little bit, that looks cool. What we can do with this is we can play with the blending modes to punch through to show the design behind the picture. Now, this is a little this is a little too sharp going on here. So I can go to the photo filters and put a blur on this. And now it's creating like a nice gradient texture behind what looks like a marathon logo, Boston Renegades. It just it looks like a marathon logo. So you can go down here and play with the different blending modes and get something that you like. I think that something like this looks super cool if I size this up. So I'd probably put this on something like Color Dodge. And yeah, there you go. You can also, the second part of this is search texture in the photo panel. So you're not limited to just textures that are in the texture panel. You, you, you can have free reign to whatever texture that you want across Unsplash or even textures that you take a picture with your phone. You could go outside and take a picture of the sidewalk and turn it into a texture. You're not locked to the texture panel in Kittle. So I could take this right here, size this up to my artboard. I would probably go into photo filters and up the contrast a little bit so that it's a little bit more just black and white and has less of those mid-tones because the more gray that you have, the more in-between colors you have in the texture, it kind of muddies the colors up. Whereas if you just have black and white, it's either grit or no grit across the board versus it being kind of like desaturating and having a desaturating effect across whatever it's on top of. So go to the blending modes, I could pick screen, and now I have my awesome texture that I didn't even need the texture panel for. So try to take advantage of all the textures that are in Unsplash as well. Again, could be something basic that you were like, duh, I already knew that, but some people don't know that. So that's for you. Okay, the last one, again, this is not necessarily a Kittle hack, but can be helpful for your Kittle workflow. I use this in every design program that I use. I call it group centering is essentially grouping things to be able to center them on the artboard and then ungrouping them. Because when I started, I didn't ever like think about that. And when that, then when I was like, I had the idea of like, why don't I just group it so that I can center it to the artboard and then I can ungroup it and then mess with whatever I want. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's say I have these three squares and I want them to be equal space from each other, but then also in, in the center of the artboard. Now you might say, okay, I can grab these three squares and then we have this handy little tidy tool and that's cool. But now I need to go over here and try to like find the center and snap to the center. No, you don't. You can hit command G. Now they're grouped together, right? If I select them, they're grouped together. I can use my alignment tools to place them in the center of the artboard and then hit command G again to ungroup them. Now they're independent from each other. I can change the color, but they're still centered on the artboard. So I've essentially used a very easily irreversible command to just help me center my artifacts on the artboard and then ungroup them. And then once you, once you get used to this workflow, it's gonna change your life because you're just gonna instinctively go select, command G, center, center, command G to ungroup it. And now you have individual control again. So those have been my five Kittle hacks, punch through, cut text, remove fills, more textures, and group centering. If there are any more things that you would like to know how to do, or if you've seen them in a tutorial and it's like, wait, 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 let me see that. How did you do that? Back up. Comment down below and I will make a tutorial for you. Also, if you have any Kittle hacks of your own, don't gatekeep it. Leave it in the comments for the rest of us to figure out and maybe I'll make a video on that too. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Kittle YouTube page so you don't miss anything. We have updates all the time and we cover a lot of trending design styles here on the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.